Welcome back to our macroeconomics charting journey. Today, we're going to dive deep into the world of employment data and learn how to use it to understand the USA's economic landscape. We'll explore data from January 1939 to September 2023 to uncover valuable insights and answer some critical questions. But before we begin, I want you to be actively involved. This isn't a passive learning experience. I'll pose some questions throughout this video, and I encourage you to think critically and share your thoughts in the comments below. Hey, let's get started. Our first step is to access the data we need. Head over to the FRED website. Put your cursor into the FRED search envelope and type PAYEMS. That's all employees, total non farm data. It responds with a familiar FRED chart. So go ahead and download the graph image to your local device. When I do this, I always create a fresh project folder for my data and charts. I put this one in a folder for Macroeconomics, Fall 2023, Employment and Trends. Now it'll be easily found. I also want you to download the Excel data for deeper analysis. Save this file and remember the name, but you want to open it right away. Oftentimes, it arrives with the opening to give you a caution that it is protected. Well, you need to enable editing, then right away click Save As to update this file to the most recent Excel workbook setting you can. Have you got it? <laughs> Great. We will use this one again straight away. Now, you're going to create an initial line chart using Excel. Select the date and employment data titles from the Excel file. That's cells A11 through B1028. With the cells selected, click the Insert ribbon, tap the Charts group to open the line option. You'll see the chart displaying the data. It dropped this chart on the sheet over your data. Does it look familiar? <laughs> Excellent. I want you to do a little electronic housekeeping. Use your mouse to right-click on the face of this chart. The menu appears with options and halfway down you will see Move Chart. <laughs> Click it. Now you see a new applet with two new row choices and the upper one showing New Sheet. Give this a name and click OK. Now this chart is on its own page, dedicated only to your chart. Now, let's add some more content to our chart. Head back to FRED and search for USREC. This is NBER-based recession indicators for the United States. Download the Excel data and save it in the same project folder with your employment data and chart. Now, open this new Excel file, enable editing, and save it to the newest version of Excel on your machine. This is a separate file and it holds information you want to use in combination with the employment data. Look to the bottom of the worksheet you just downloaded on the left side of the lower screen. We call this a tab and you want to right click on it. This opens a new drop down menu which includes move or copy. That opened another mini screen where you can select the book name. Click the downward arrow on this list and locate the name of the employment data workbook you just created a few minutes ago. That changed the lower screen to list the sheets that are already on that workbook. Click on the Move to End option and click the radio box to create a copy. That leaves these data in the new workbook while copying these data to the previous one too. Yeah, great! Now. They are all combined. We will add this recession data to your employment chart in a new series labeled hmm, Recessions. Think about this combination for a moment. The employment data shows as a line on the current chart, but the new data you will add is a series of bar chart displays. Huh. It's one or the other, right? Well, once upon a time it was, but the updates to Excel enable this on your machine. We will set this to show bars on your line chart. View the employment data chart. Right click on the middle of the chart and see a new menu appear. Select the option of Select Data. This opens a new panel. 
with two new mini screens. The right side shows the source data of the horizontal axis. This is the series of dates. The left side shows the input data and you see PAY EMS with the number of employees each month. Now you click on the Add button to insert the recession information. When you do, you will see a new mini window titled Edit Series. Type the name Recessions in the upper bar as the series name. The lower series values comes from the newest sheet you incorporated into this workbook. Click on the upper pointing arrow to see another smaller applet open up. It is waiting for you to tell it where these data reside. Click lower on the list of sheets for this workbook to find the recession tab. Keep this mini applet stationary while opening your recessions sheet. Remember, you want to start these data in date unison with the employment chart, which is January 1st, 1939. There it is. You want to start your selection in B1021 by clicking there. With this cell selected, hold down the Shift and Control keys to touch the keyboard's downward arrow. This teleports you to the bottom of this sheet, and in so doing, you identify the data you most wanted. Look back to the mini applet title Edit Series to see the coded list of the data's location. Now click on the right side corner with the downward pointing arrow. This takes you back to the previous mini applet, and you will click OK. You are now back to the main Select Data series with the new recession data on this chart. And nice! You click OK and the data are combined. You look at your new chart and it looks like eh, nothing happened. The line chart is still in place, but those bar charts are not seen. It's alright. The data are there, but we need to tell the program how they should look. Click on the edge of the chart to see something you may never have seen before, super ribbons. They are in the upper right side of the menu area, and on my computer they are green in color. Chart Design and Format These are only seen when you have a chart selected on this file. You click on the chart and these come to life. Click on Chart Design and you'll see the Change Chart Type. Click on it. From the Change Chart Type applet, look to the lower left side list to choose the Combo option. At the top of this list is a pseudo thumbnail showing what it will look like, but the lower part is where you make it a line. The series name lists the two files you have integrated into this set. The PAY EMS is first. To the right of this name, find the pull down list and select Line. This is our line for the graph you already started. Below this is the recessions file. To the right, you see the pull down arrow and select clustered column. Further to the right, see the radial box under the secondary axis column. Click on it. <laughs> you just made the settings to enable two vertical axes on this chart. The settings are looking right. So, click OK. Wow! You just created a double vertical axis Excel chart showing the number of people employed along with the recession bars. But it needs a bit of dressing up. We need labels for the axes, a title on the chart, and some adjustments for clarity. You can do this in the most familiar way. When you click on those bars, you will see a panel open on the right side of this figure. Navigate to the Paint Bucket icon and select it with a click. Then, see the color area on the panel and select a familiar light gray color, similar to what Fred did on their chart. You can also click on the right side vertical axis to see that editing panel op open up on the right. This is a series of zeros and one options, but the program displays the maximum as 1.2. Hey, you really want it to end at 1 exactly. Select the farthest right icon from the axis option list and you will see Minimum and Maximum. Reset the Maximum to 1.0. Oh hey, remember to save your file? Hmm. Now, let's take our analysis further. Click on the Chart Design Super Ribbon. On the left side of the ribbon list, you'll see Add Chart Element. Look to the bottom of this list 
to see Trend Line. Click on it and select Exponential. This creates a trend line based on the employment data's trend from 1939 to the present. It's a small dotted line, so click on it. A new editing panel opens on the right side of your Excel screen. Be experimental with this one. You can select each type of line, set the weight, the color of this line, and make it clearer. At the bottom of these options, you'll find Display Equation on Chart and Display R Squared on Chart. Yeah. Slightly above this area, you'll find a Forecast option. You can tell it to look forward for some number of periods. Yeah. Try entering 12 for one year, or 60 for five years. See how these options dress up this chart. Make it the information you want to share. Adjustments to the right side vertical axis stretches the left side vertical axis too. So you may want to reset a maximum that is more consistent with your economic data on this chart. Okay, just select the axis set and adjust the numbers on the right side panel. These are the adjustments of your chart, so make them visible and clear right here. Find the Add Chart Element on the farthest upper left side menu area to add titles and labels for this chart and for the axes. You can click and drag the formula from the trend line along with the R squared measure. That R squared at 95% is significant, but only if you use it now. This is one of the items you want to write about as you present this figure. Yeah, more on that one soon. Making this chart is significant, but your job is not done yet. Hey, I want you to export this file as a picture on your computer and then import it into MS Word Well, you will label it, cite it, and make it part of your analysis. This series will become second nature to you as you experience the power of economic analyses. Left click on the chart image within Excel. It should become outlined with a large square. Once the chart is selected, right click on the edge area of the chart. In the menu that appears, choose Save as Picture. Specify the location where you saved the Fred image and give this one a new name like Excel Employment. Click Save. Remember to save your file again? <laughs> we will now teleport over to your MS Word document where you will explain these data. Open your Word document. Establish the place in this report where your figures will reside. Position the cursor where you want to insert the Fred image you downloaded earlier. Click on the Insert tab in the Word ribbon. On your computer, Choose Picture and locate the saved images, the Fred chart. Select the image and click Insert. In your Word document, you'll need to label and cite this figure. The Fred graph citation is already familiar, and you can port your Fred citation to this active Word file. You know how to use the heading style 7 to make the automatic numbering of your figures. You need to give this a label like USA Employment, 1939 to 2023. The chart you made in Excel is the second one, and this gets a special treatment. You have a two-stage process for this one. Type the label as Employment and Recessions. Set the style heading as Heading 7 to engage the automatic numbering, which becomes Figure 2, and your label is already in position. You need to cite yourself as the creator of this new chart, while also citing the source of the data from FRED. First, you can cite this as the data coming from FRED. Pull that one from the Citations and Bibliography list, as you did several seconds ago. To insert your name as the author, click within the citation, right in the middle of it. From the References ribbon, go to Citations and Bibliography Selection. Select Insert Citation. Choose Add New Source. Populate these fields for your preferred APA citation options. I am citing my name only for example. <laughs> I want to see your name entered here. Take credit for being the creator of this chart. When you are done, click OK. It will display both citations listed within one set of parentheses. Now in this line below, as a normal style heading, 
Insert the chart you made and export it to this folder that you're very familiar with now. Put in that chart that you made right here. Now it's looking professional. <laughs> Look at that. You've got it. Now let's spend some time analyzing this chart together. I encourage you to share your observations and thoughts in class and in the comments below. I want you to prepare this report with your mind attuned to the trend line you made along with the historic data you captured. Explain why the trend line was below the historic data from 1965 through 2009 as the Great Recession slammed our economy. What does the juxtaposition demonstrate as they changed positions since the Great Recession and through the COVID-19 recession in 2010. The gap between the trend line and actual employment is significant. Make a reasoned estimate of why this is happening. Tell the reader what this means for the USA GDP. Use reason analyses to explain what it means for all of us now and for our future. Make prognostications about the long-term impacts as you see it. You know I want to see a cover page, title page, table of contents, list of figures, and all those listed on pages numbered I double I triple I. Transition to pages one, two, three as you present your professional report. Make sure you include that obligatory works cited section. You now have the mastery of making your chart in the most incredible way. Couple that with the pros you know how to present. And now you are thinking like an economist.